Hi all, I have another fun attacking game of Leela Chess, ID 11041, against Ethereal 10.88. This is, features a King's Gambit, so this is from David Grosvenor. Let's see if Leela can come up with anything new in the King's Gambit, a very historical, romantic era opening. Time control, fast and furious, 40 moves per two minutes, with a two second increment per move. So E4, E5, F4, the end of book. Now, Ethereal uh, chooses one of the top choices uh, against the King's Gambit, Bishop c5. Uh, accepting it is the major choice to try and refute it. They say you have to accept a gamut. d5 is like Morphe's counter gamut attempt, breaking the center, counter attacking in the center. But Bishop c5 is very, very annoying for white, Acro crossing that diagonal, so making it difficult for white to castle. Knight f3 is played d6 and now the top move in chess based live book is knight c3 an example continuation knight f6 bishop c4 you can see that the point is to try and grip d5 and after knight c6 d3 a6 f5 and this is thought to be an even position uh, so white's got that lock on on d5 and may actually by, by playing f5 may actually get away with queen e2 and bishop e3 later without having to face bishop g4. That might be one of the ideas to try and castle queenside, which is the major downside here, that uh, castling kingside is inconvenient. Now, there's a very, very interesting uh, alternative move, which is less popular in line books, c3. But what is really curious, bishop b6 is one of the two main moves here after c3. Knight f6... Uh, d4 this position bishop b4 check should be fine uh, for white with a small edge what causes more problems uh, it seems is bishop b6 after knight c3 this position looks a little bit pre precarious for white uh, but maybe after bishop g5 it's about even it looks precarious there's a lot of vacuumous uh, weaknesses here for black to potentially exploit uh, but we have bishop b6. Now here is the really uh, interesting point. In traditional like chess-based library, it seems as though white really had the intention of blunting the bishop on that diagonal with d4. Uh, so this kind of scenario of e takes, it does seem logical, and we're transposing into what we've just seen nearly, uh, with again bishop g5 being a, a good feature because the bishop's over here. Queen d7, and this should be uh, with a small edge for white after queen d7. Uh, nothing more. But um, we have a slightly different treatment here, which is curious. And actually, I've crossed, I mean, cross referencing with my own Stockfish 9, that also likes Leela's continuation. And this is very rare, this next move in chess based library. So both these kind of state-of-the-art technology engines with their totally different like approaches, one neural network and one you know very strong alpha beta pruning type uh, search, incremental depth, both come up with this idea to play f takes e5. Now maybe this has been underestimated because there's a really quirky move here. I wonder if you can guess which is the follow-up idea to make this move more eff effectual. Uh, so still based on this issue as well, and the slightly, you know, the pawn at the moment cannot be taken. Uh, just to rule this out for you, queen h4 check, this position is just very, very good for black. The queen's not getting trapped, uh, it's just very, very good. But here, yeah, can you guess if I give you five seconds, white to play here? This is seems like a novelty idea, this f takes, followed by this next move. Five seconds, starting from now. Okay, knight a3. So the idea of forking b6 and e5. Uh, so knight f6 is played. If a6, then knight c4. And actually white can grab that pawn now with a big advantage. And if the bishop wants to waste time here with bishop c5, then maybe b4 uh, is, is possible as well in this position. Now let's go here. So... Uh, Actually, maybe knight c4, sorry, if bishop b6 immediately, knight c4, this position, bishop b4, bishop e7, and taking there is, is safe enough for white. So, um, yeah, it's it's very, very interesting. So knight a3, 
knight f6 was played. So counterattacking white's pawn. That's actually just humbly protected with queen c2. Black castles, knight c4. So white wants to get that bishop. Rook e8. In no rush at the moment, no d3. Uh, taking here is far too dangerous as one might expect with the king on the e-file. For example, this position uh, with c5 striking hard at the center, the king still in the center. This is not very good. This is, black's got a, a big advantage. So white has to trade with caution. d3, knight bd7, bishop e2. And now c6, as though the bishop might go back, but that's actually snapped. So Steinitz would approve. Accumulating small advantages was... Steinitz, the first world chess champion, emphasized that that for attacks to succeed, you, one must usually play with an advantage. Otherwise, there should exist defensive resources to keep the balance. Now, Leela's basically accumulated a small advantage here, the bishop pair. And in particular, this bishop really has no ca counterpart in the position. So you can imagine later, white should have uh, the possibility of demonstrating a superiority on the dark squares involving this bishop. White castles now, and we see that semi-open f file as well. So it looks as though white's got all the perks here. Dynamic play as well as the bishop pair. h6, h3, which does seem to weaken these squares a bit more. And black actually pounces on this g3 square. But now uh, this next move is really quite cute. It's a kind of sliding block puzzle move, bishop d1. Yeah, so the queen can actually come to f2 here, potentially. Black does get in this forcing move, rookie one, and now another forcing move. But both these knights are actually repelled pack now, literally by the king itself here. This king at h2 repels this knight back, and then this one's kicked. d4 goes to e6. And now queen f2 has arrived on the scene. So not just protecting d4, but keeping an eye on this f file. Knight e f4, these knights are still mischie mischievous. <laughs> so bishop c2 is played here. Knight d3 would be uh, a key threat, for example, it seems. So bishop c2, the knights are not doing too much damage now. The center is still held firmly. Knight g6. Bishop d2, bishop e6, as though a2 is a big problem. Well, that's just moved. Rook f8, and now g4 again, kicking the knights back. And black's provocation now starts to be, it looks to be, it's punishable with g5 now. Trying to open this g file now. So there's a semi open f file, and now there'll be a semi open g file after hg knight takes. Uh, there's possibilities as if that knight wasn't there, there'll be queen h4. So this looks as though black's in the defensive posture at the moment knight h7 rook g1 and now after knight takes bishop takes we can see that white is building up now on the g file not just protecting the pawn here technically <clears throat> but preparing to double rooks and doubles rooks blacks trying to get some counterplay now for dear life <clears throat> pardon me so b4 is played and there's a real stunning move now in this position. I wonder if you can guess it. If I give you five seconds to pause the video, white to play here. Okay. Bishop f6. Yeah, there is a use of that dark square bishop without the counterpart. This is really crushing. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, a takes could, could also have been played actually. This position was pretty harmless. But it would ruin White's attack, the smoothness of White's attack, uh, considerably to what was played. So no distraction there needed. Bishop f6. So here, uh, b3 was played. If we look at g takes, queen takes, there's a big idea of rook takes g6 now just crashing for a mating. Uh, so this looks like the top engine choice. It shows how desperate the position is. So let's pretend a normal move is played that pins the rook that can just be unpinned with e5 and unleashing the bishop so now this just mates basically this scenario just mates or g7 even so uh, b3 was tried the bishop goes to d3 rook a4 and now just the calm h4 so just really pushing this g file a bit further uh, to put more pressure 
bishop c4 bishop drops back c5 and now h5 the attack is relentless i mean the doubled rooks are in great harmony here beautiful attacking harmony another very picturesque position from Leela really she has these beautiful attacking positions which we can only dream of i think in our games so e5 opening up this bishop as well everything seems to be ideally placed queen takes queen takes this is just crashing through after hg uh, the problem is now revealed not taking with check double check but actually g7 which betrays the idea of rook h3 and rook h8 chat mating <laughs> so black desperately just gives up the rook instead it sees that as the lesser evil choice if rook e8 rook h3 and then just mating with rook h8 so f5 was played rook h3 uh, not taking the rook even just rook h3 uh, black defends against the mate threat now prepared for this with taking here so white cashes out Leela cashes out here after rook g6 with taking the rook but it's a rook up it's enough bishop takes f5 is more accurate perhaps than taking on g6 but it's it's a rook up whatever the way you look at it here it's uh yeah the game ended here adjudicate there's a win for white pretty easy a rook up i'm to say king takes yeah there's nothing that's doing here so i thought this was quite an innovative treatment of this particular king's gambit variation with bishop c5 and the bishop voluntarily dropping back the idea of f takes and knight a3 is one for king's gambiteers who want to revisit and maybe revitalize this romantic era chess opening and it's got the support this variation with f takes knight a3 has got the support not just of leela but of stockfish nine which also gives it the approval this treatment okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much